FBI malware goes global, protecting your child's ID, the future of the internet, and more, all coming up now on ThreatWire. Greetings, I'm Patrick Norton, and this is ThreatWire for January 27, 2016, your summary of the threats to our security, privacy, and internet freedom, and a big thanks to everybody that supports ThreatWire at patreon.com slash threatwire. Interesting story up on Recode, Peter Kafka reports that, quote, Twitter has stopped showing ads to some of its most valuable users. So essentially, for some of the most high-profile and active users on Twitter, it's an ad-free or nearly ad-free experience, Mr. Kafka says, which frankly has me thinking a lot about net neutrality. Companies like Netflix being forced to pay for carriage, while companies that happen to be ISPs like Comcast structure their ISPs so that their content is hosted on a separate network from the rest of the internet that you pay for on a monthly basis. The internet has always been complicated and messy, and I think it's getting a lot more complicated and messier and profit motivated. And while I doubt somebody with a half million followers ever notices ads on Twitter, I want to remind everybody that, say, think about it, new online services needing to drop piles of cash to get through your ISP and onto your phone, VR glasses, or desktop is a major barrier to entry that will change how or if new technologies, much less new companies, can flourish online. This is going to be a big continuing issue through 2016, although a lot of people are arguing that net neutrality is dead and major ISPs are going to force everybody to pay a as much as they can to get to your eyeballs. The FBI's 2015 child pornography sting, which involves seeding malware, or as the FBI puts it, employing network investigative techniques onto at least a thousand computers, is truly global in scale. That's the word for motherboard and child porn sting goes global. FBI hacked computers in Denmark, Greece, and Chile. It's estimated that somewhere between 13 and 1500 IP addresses were identified from the 200,000 plus users of a site that was first seized by the FBI, then run off of FBI servers for 13 days. The director of Europol described the operation as, this is a motherboard quote, a successful infiltration and technical investigation of a Tor hidden service, i.e. the dark webs. I gotta be honest with you, I am torn between a personal desire to see all child pornographers eliminated, probably with extreme prejudice, and my concerns about A, Tor being vulnerable, and B, a warrant that gave the FBI, says motherboard, uh, pretty much an unlimited number of searches against unidentified targets anywhere in the world. This is an interesting question. How far can you go to take out child pornographers? I think most of us as a society would say all the way, and this is certainly an example where the FBI did that, because the FBI is still dealing with court cases that are, well, basically brought by people that are incredibly upset that the FBI ran this website for any number of days, even to stop child pornography. Nursing home workers caught sharing nude patient images on Snapchat is the title of an article on Sophos' security blog, which is <clears throat> named Naked Security, unfortunately. Look, people, there is no patch for human stupidity or, frankly, for cruelty. There is, however, the possibility that the accused nursing assistant will get up to 18 months and two years of supervised release. You'd think you wouldn't have to educate nursing home employees that they should not take pictures of patients without consent, especially naked pictures. And, hey, remind your post-pubescent children that Snapchat photos don't really go away ever. Okay. Meanwhile, we're told that a credit freeze is still way more useful in stopping identity theft than credit monitoring. Shame that nobody told the OPM that before they pissed money down a hole on credit monitoring for everybody breached last year. On a less snarky note, Krebs on Security has a great article, The Lowdown on Freezing Your Kid's Credit, which is a great idea to keep identity thieves from using your child's social security number and information to open credit cards, bank accounts, or start government benefits. Sound silly? Check this out. Krebs quotes a Carnegie Mellon study that looked at 40,000 children and found that 10% were victims of ID theft. And I guarantee you that number or percentage will grow. Unfortunately, only 23 states currently have some kind of mechanism for parents or guardians to protect their child's ID. Links in the show notes to learn more on how to protect your child from yet another growth opportunity for digital thievery and props to Krebs for tracking this article down. Before I go, I want to give a huge thanks to everyone that supports ThreatWire on Patreon.com slash ThreatWire. I hope you will contribute to help us keep this coming completely independent and ad-free. Just head over to Patreon.com slash ThreatWire to learn more. And hey, we may even feature your adorable fur babies, or adorable as most people who speak English would call them, like these on our next episode. And hey, if you want to share a picture of your favorite computer, Ethernet cable, or tool, I'm down with that too. If you can't donate a like, a share, or a subscribe goes a long way too, and you can find all our episodes, links to our social networks, and other ways to contribute over at threatwire.net. With that, I'm Patrick Norton, and I'll see you on the internet.